Hello, my name is Stephen Marcus, and I want to do a little lecture for you on passphrases. I want to talk some about what a good passphrase is, what a bad passphrase is. I'll do a little demonstration on how easy it is to crack bad passphrases, and I'll talk a little bit about techniques on how you can set good passphrases. Probably the first thing I ought to talk about is this term I'm using, passphrase. Well, we're trying to get away from using the term password because it implies that you could use a word to secure something, and a word is going to be terribly insufficient, as we will see. Let's get started. Let's say I've got an account on a computer somewhere. If a hacker tries to break into that, the first thing he's going to do is try a technique that I'm going to call intelligent guessing. He's going to try to figure out something about me to see if I've set that password to some word that relates to me in somehow. So if there's a user, Jed Clampett, on a system, there's a pretty good likelihood that he's going to set his password to something that he cares about, something that he knows about. So dog, hunting, cement pond, shotgun, well doggies. Um, maybe his favorite band, maybe what he likes to do, maybe where he lives, anything that can be related to him. Specifically, family winds up being a, a really good candidate for passwords. Ellie Mae, he could use Ellie Mae's birthdays. If he had any more kids, he could combine her birthday with another kid's birthday. Um, any kind of combination, the year they were born, the year he was born. He might even use something like a social security number, either Ellie Mays, his own, or something like that. And I'll pause right there to say, if you use a social security number or a driver's license number for a password, and a hacker manages to crack that, then you're giving away something that might be more valuable than what you were trying to protect to begin with. A hacker may be mining for aluminum and wind up striking gold, and that's not something that we want to happen. So you definitely don't want to make a password something sensitive like that. So the hacker gets in, he tries to figure out just by the person's identity what their password might be. He goes through a large list of stuff, and if that doesn't work, he's going to have to resort to what I'd call wild guessing. Um, it might not be as wild as you might think. A lot of people set common passwords. The word password gets used a lot. One, two, three, test, one, two, three. Now these are just some examples. Let me in. Simple keyboard roles like QWERTY or ASDFJKL semicolon. Test, um, a simple one or an A or a P or a letter repeated. A lot of times the user will make their username and their password the same, or just barely modify it. Your password may be whatever your username is, plus one, two, three. So there are a lot of just really common passwords out there that anybody might use. So after the hacker goes through those, if he can't find anything there, he'll start a dictionary attack. Assuming that you set your password to just a word, which we're going to find out is a bad idea. We'll take for an example, we'll take a 500,000 word dictionary, which is a pretty good sized dictionary. Any word that you can think of in general is most likely going to be in a 500,000 word dictionary. All right, to work against that, we're going to use a, a cracker program that is capable of 9 million attempts per second. Now this isn't a super fast machine, this is just a regular machine. But there are hackers out there who are taking a gamer machine or a, a more powerful machine and if a machine has like two video cards, video cards have pretty good processors on them these days and there's ways that you can combine your processor with the graphical processors in your video cards and they're getting results of up to, not, up to four billion attempts per second. So this could drastically affect how long it takes to crack a password. Think about if you're going to travel across country, the difference in going 35 miles an hour and going 3,500 miles an hour. It's drastically going to reduce the time to reach your goal. If your password is any single dictionary word, and it's found in that 500,000 word dictionary, the math on it's pretty easy. You take 500,000, you divide it by your 9 million attempts per second, and your password is cracked in .05 seconds. So this is where I'm heading with that. If you set your password to just any single word, whether it relates to you or not, it's going to be extremely easy to bust. The next step 
is a technique that they actually used a good bit years ago before machines got more powerful and people were really, really trying to crack things, is using a combination of two words. Take two arbitrary words like chicken arsenic. Two arbitrary words. To get the number of combinations of those, you can take the 500,000 times 500,000 to come up with 250 billion. A lot, of, a lot of different combinations. You take that and divide that by your 9 million attempts per second to get 27, 28,000 seconds. <clears throat> you divide that by 60 to get 462 minutes. Divide that by 60 to get 7.5 hours to bust any combination of any two words in that 500,000 word dictionary. Now also take into account that this 7.7 .7 hours represents the very last combination. It would be something like zygomatic, zygomatic. So the very last two words. Now if your password was something lower in the list, depending on the algorithm that the, the cracking program used, it could be half that time. If your password is not found in a dictionary attack, which we'd hope it's not, the attacker is going to be forced to resort to what's called a brute force attack. This is where you want to put your attacker. You want to make them spend a, as much time as possible trying to get into the, the password. The way the brute force attack works is they're going to start off with A, 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 B, and they're going to index through these, and then when they get to the end, it'll be A, 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 B, A, and they're going to index through a series of characters. Now, obviously, this is going to take a lot of time, but also you can see that they're eventually going to get every password by doing this. So that's the trade-off. Okay, let's do a couple of small examples. We'll take our given 9, billion, 9 million attempts per second, and we're going to say that the password can be 62 different characters, and where I get that is the English alphabet has 26 characters. Um, lowercase and uppercase would be 52 characters. And we'll go with just the 0 through 9 numbers for a character set of, of 62, just for our example here. If you have a 5 character password that are just random characters and, and not a word, the way you figure out how many combinations you have is you take 62 and it's raised to the 5th power, or 62 times 62 times 62 times 62 times 62, and you wind up with 916 million combinations. You take that, you divide it by 9 million, and you get 102 seconds or 1.7 minutes to crack any five letter password using that character set that we're talking about. Okay, let's move on to a six character password. A six character password would be 62 raised to the sixth power or 56 billion combinations. You take 56 billion, divide that by 9 million, and you get 6300 seconds or we'll work that out to about 1.75 hours. So what's significant here is when you go from just adding one character from five to six characters, you jump from 1.7 minutes to 1.7 hours just by adding a character. Let's move forward. An eight character password winds up being 208 trillion combinations. Divide that by nine million, you get 24 million seconds. Um, 6,700 hours or 280 days, you can see that you're getting into some, some more time. And the reason for this is this is an exponential equation. Think about an exponential curve. It's going to go and, and curve and get higher and higher quickly. Finally, we'll look at a 10 character password. A 10 character password winds up being exponential notation, 8.4 times 10 to the 17th combination. So 17 zeros effectively. 93 billion seconds, 1 million days, or roughly 3,000 years. So that's how long it would take to crack a 10 character password. And again, compare that to a 5 character password. Let's hope that sometime in that 3,000 years the user thought to change their password and wound up making all this effort for nothing. So that's another uh, point that I should probably make is if somebody is trying to crack a password in this way, changing your password regularly is going to is going to defeat some of this. All right, cracking demonstration. Let's take a look. I've got an installation of Windows XP. 
And on this installation, I've added some users and I've given them passwords. We've started with very simple passwords. I've just got some simple usernames. Um, use some numbers, a couple of combinations of words, numbers and letters. As we go down the list, they get a little bit more difficult. I've got more numbers, a little bit longer. Started to throw in some more, some, some more characters. And finally, the last couple should be pretty good passwords. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a very common hacker program and we're going to see how long it takes to crack these passwords. And to get started, I'm going to stretch it out so that we can see what we're doing. And in the time that it took me to do that, the program has already cracked password, which happened to be the administrator password on this VM. Um, look at the times, your audit times. That was cracked in zero seconds. Forensic was busted in zero seconds. Critter three dollar sign, despite the fact that it had a special character, was cracked in zero seconds. Fred 25 was cracked in seven seconds. Dino in 17 seconds, as well as 1941. The program goes through, this is the stuff that it goes through. It started user info, dictionary, hybrid, and now it's moved on to the brute force attack. Now this will take a little bit. We can look over here and see it's, there's been about 34 seconds elapsed. And it's, it's thinking it's going to run for about 2 hours and 40 more minutes. And it's giving me a percentage. Watch what it's doing right here. Remember the indexing thing where I wrote A, 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 A? This is it right here that it's indexing through. And this is running around 8 million attempts or keys per second. So I'm going to let this run a while and we'll see how it does. All right, let's do a little bit of an update on what's going on with our cracker program. We've been at it about an hour and a half with about an hour left. And the thing it's busted since then was Betty's password, which was hat trick. And just a little while ago, it busted 23 whiskey 23, which was Granny's password. It's still cranking right along. Uh, now it's about 9 million keys a second. The ones that it still has left, we can take a look at how this is busted into two parts. Now that'll be important here in a few minutes, but for now I'm just going to let it keep going. All right, my cracking program is now finished and it looks like it cracked almost all of the passwords. The only ones that it didn't get was the one for Wilbur, which it says is empty, and the one there's one for help assistant and one for Jethro that still is left there with question marks. And we can look back and see what they actually were. Jethro's had a dollar sign in it. And then this one, it says empty. The reason that the program didn't even attempt this is because it's over 15 characters. And that's one thing that you can use as a guideline when you're setting passwords. Um, didn't even attempt it. Now this other one, let's take a look at why there are um, question marks and then it solved the last part of it. The way that Windows XP stores passwords, if it is less than 14 characters, it busts it into two seven character hunks. If you think about that, that ruins your exponential advantage when you have a password. Would you rather fight one six foot tall guy or two three foot tall guys? What it's done is it's busted it up and it busted in two different sections and that's what's allowed these all to be busted. Except for this one because by default this program doesn't search for uh, special characters like dollar sign percents. Now you could tune this to where it did that it would just take a longer amount of time and then those would be busted too. But it would take longer than two and a half hours. So there's your example of, of cracking. The moral of the story with XP, XP, this it's, they're called landman passwords, and it can be disabled. But generally, you never want to set a password less than 15 characters on an XP machine. On Vista machines, by default, this has been disabled, so it's a little bit more secure. So, how do you set good passphrases? We look at the first one, Dino is what Fred set. 
It's easy to remember, which is what we're looking for, but it's also really easily cracked. We look at the one that didn't get cracked, and it's a great password. Um, one thing that might make it a little bit better might be throwing like a dollar sign or a percent in there, but it still didn't get it just because of its length. It's really hard to crack. Obviously, though, it's going to be hard to remember. We've got another one here. If I showed you this password, I could actually show it to you in plain text and then take it away, and you most likely are not going to be able to remember what it is. Let me give you the key to this. Wasting away again in Margaritaville, looking for my lost shaker of salt. Now you can remember it. If you just use the first character of some phrase that you can remember it, maybe it's a song, um, it gives you a way to encode it without it being an actual word, and you just have to start into the next verse, and you just make your, your password longer or longer. So this actually is a good technique, but it wound up getting busted because it is less than 15 characters. The long one, how did I do it? Another technique that you can use is you kind of have to look at your keyboard. This that's in red is actually Fantastic Voyage. That is my password. When I typed it in, the F, if you look at the keyboard, if you go up and over to the right, one character, the capital F becomes a capital T. The A becomes a W. The N becomes a J. And you just keep spelling it out that way. So now all I have to remember is Fantastic Voyage, which is easier to remember, and then remember my key or my algorithm is just by looking up and looking over to the right and typing in that key. So that should give you an idea on how to set some better passwords.